inward turning of the eyelid margin again it can be most common causes senile so first we'll talk about lower lid and then upper lid afterwards so most common cause is senile then again cicatricial means if there is a conjunctival cicatrization chemical injuries inside the eye which is pulling the eyelid inside that is cicatricial congenital entropion is also one and spastic is because if you put a eyelid patching for a very long time if you put eyelid patch there is a propensity because of prolonged eyelid patching the inward turning of eyelid takes place that is spastic entropion let us start with senile involutional let us start with involutional again you is a spot diagnosis you can tell the patient this is sir this is lower lid entropion but if you tell you the if you can tell the grade again simple three grading that will be very very good for you so it's a simple three grading like for uh, senile ectropion there is senile entropion three grading the first grade is only the posterior border which is a sharp border is enrolled the sharp border is going inside posterior border is going inside second the margin hold the margin internal marginal strip is going inside and third the complete margin is turned inside so 1 2 3 grade for senile entropion so lower lid entropion just say grade 1 2 3 and after that what we say sir i would like to do the test so the test for senile entropion the three test horizontal laxity pinch test snapback test the lateral canthal and medial canthal laxity distraction test are same are same for entropion ectropion so you can say the next i would like to do uh, the test for horizontal laxity medial canthal and lateral canthal laxity for lower lid entropion theek okay. hai then similarly the cause like the causes of uh, the surgery of involution entropion or based on what was the cause similarly involution entropion surgery is also based on the cause why is in senile the lower eyelid is going inside one important reason is there is overriding of orbicularis muscle preseptal muscle overrides the pretarsal and turns the eyelid inside overriding overriding the orbicularis of preseptal overriding the pretarsal second is the retractors there are retractors i told you the retract retractors of the lower eyelid which retracts the uh, eyelid out so retractors are not functioning well this insertion of the retractors the retractors are not functioning well in the lower eyelid so eyelid is going inside and third there is horizontal lid laxity same as uh, ectropion see in this picture what what is happening here see the preseptal orbicularis is overriding the pretarsal causing the eyelid to go inside so overriding is one mechanism disinsertion of lateral lid retractors other and horizontal laxity is a third mechanism the surgery is based on these three principles only whatever is the cause you have to treat the cause like for example if there is a overriding of the orbicularis what you do if there is a overriding you do everting sutures simple is everting suture that is a basic thing what you do for ectropion evert the eyelid simple everting how you do it you don't need to know just remember for overriding you do simple everting suture you have to take the eyelid out so everting suture is done when there is a overriding of orbicularis if only by everting it is not able to help you can do wees procedure wees procedure is everting plus a full thickness lid splitting lid splitting is also done along with the everting sutures that is known as wees procedure so everting suture and wees procedure for overriding of the orbicularis second mechanism for disinsertion of the retractors so when there is a disinsertion of the retractors you plicate the retractors jones procedure 
a very common procedure jones procedure is plication of the lower lid retractors mostly done for recurrences the lower lid retractors are plicated tuck to make them tight make them tight that is the meaning because they are going uh, they are they are loose eyelid is going inside you make them tight you make them tight eyelid will come back to the normal position and if there is a horizontal lid laxity think yes okay, so again pentagon excision either pentagon excision or lateral tarsal strip to make the eyelid tight तो ये तो चीज आपको नहीं भूलनी चाहिए हॉरिजॉन्टल लैक्सिटी पेंटागन एंड लैटरल टास्ट स्ट्रिप प्रोसीजर आर डन ठीक है पेंटागन एक्सीजन लैटरल टास्ट स्ट्रिप प्रोसीजर फॉर हॉरिजॉन्टल लेट लैक्सिटी एंड देर इज वन वर्ड क्विकट क्विकट इज वेन देर इज अ ओवर राइडिंग प्लस हॉरिजॉन्टल लैक्सिटी सो वाइज एंड लेट लैक्सिटी आर डन टूगेदर वीज प्रोसीजर एंड द पेंटागन आर डन टूगेदर दैट इज नोन एज क्विकट प्रोसीजर क्विकट इज दिस सी पेंटागन इज टेकन आउट and there is a horizontal full thickness incision that is a wise procedure also done so wise plus pentagon is a quicker procedure that is for senile so whatever is the cause for senile entropion either the cause is overriding of the uh, overriding of the orbicularis you just avert or you do horizontal splitting that is wise if there is a disinsertion of the retractors you tight the retractors If there is a horizontal laxity, I told you already horizontal laxity. Please remember pentagon lateral tarsal strip. All right, that is for senile. Now senile is important one. You have to remember senile. Cicatricial, of course, is uh, also sometimes asked as a theory, not for practical, for theory. Cicatricial means there is some burns uh, or the chemical injuries. Which is causing the eyelid to go inside. So it depends whether it's a associated with trichiasis or not. If trichiasis is also present, you split the gray line and reposition the retractors. Because gray line, if you split, you divide the anterior and posterior lamella, and the retractor which is causing the eyelid to go inside are repositioned. and if there is a no trichiasis now this is to be just remembered if there is no trichiasis but the lower eyelid retraction is there below the inferior limbus if lower eyelid is retracted more than 1.5 or less than 1.5 if it is less than 1.5 see what is done here if it is less than 1.5 you do a tarsal fracture you want to make the eyelid outside so you do a tarsal fracture and then evert everting suture is done tarsal fracture and everting suture for less than 1.5 retraction your aim is to bring the eyelid out so tarsal fracture and everting suture is done and what is more than 1.5 there is a graft posterior lamella grafts posterior lamella grafts between the two uh, tarsus you cut the tarsus and between them you put a graft and then everting suture is done for cicatricia so this can just be remembered theek okay, hai this can just be remembered congenital entropion they ask you what is the name of surgery the surgery name you should remember hodes procedure h o t z theek okay, hai congenital i told you how to differentiate congenital entropion for from epi blepharon in entropion all entire eyelid is going inside but in epi blepharon only the skin is turned inside if you just pull in epi blepharon the eyelash will become straight normal so hodes procedure is done what is hodes procedure it is just suturing of the skin to the eyelid retractors suturing of the skin to the tarsus and the lower retractors so that the eyelid comes outside suturing of the skin to the lower retractors it's just like everting it's just like everting the eyelid so suture the skin to make it tight to the lower tarsus or retractor so that it comes out that is known as hodes procedure
and spastic is to treat the underlying cause it is because of prolonged patching so to treat the underlying cause for senile entropion or for spastic entropion okay and that is for lower eyelid entropion see upper eyelid entropion now this slightly little bit more complex upper eyelid entropion again it can be congenital it is caused because of the vertical kink in the tarsus in the upper tarsus is vertical kink which is causing the upper eyelid to go inside it can be acquired upper eyelid entropion acquired because of shortage of the posterior lamella the posterior lamella is shortened so the anterior lamella is causing the eyelid to go inside that is causing the upper eyelid entropion shortage of upper posterior lamella now this shortage can be caused by uh, infections like trachoma was an important cause of upper eyelid entropion herpes zoster is an important cause it can be cicatricial again cicatricial is again chemical injuries steven johnson syndrome ocular cicatricial pemphigoid can be because of uh, an ophthalmic socket there is no support so upper eyelid can go inside basic mechanism i have told you there is shortage of the upper posterior lamella okay like this is a upper eyelid if there is a posterior lamella here which is shortened so what happens there will be in turning of the eyelid margin inside that will lead to upper eyelid entropion now surgery depends on this question was asked a very advanced question uh, was asked to me that what is the classification of upper eyelid entropion so this is a kemp and collen classification very advanced point i am telling you and the surgeries are based on this mild moderate severe kemp and collen classification mild and this also you can do uh, clinically if there is a patient of upper eyelid entropion the mild one says that the point which you should remember there is conjunctivization of the eyelid margin okay fine there is one example but what you can do is you can ask the patient to look up you can ask the patient to look up if the patient is upper eyelid entropion ask the patient to look up and if on up gaze there is a lash which is touching the eyeball that is a mild not in primary position but in up gaze the lash is touching the eyeball that is a mild grade of kemp and collen and what you can do is you just reposition the anterior lamella just reposition the anterior lamella okay just this is the anterior lamella from outside you split and reposition you have to bring the upper eyelid outside so reposition the anterior lamella for mild anterior lamella repositioning how you can check If the patient of upper eyelid entropion mild grade, ask the patient to look up. If the eyelash is not touching the eye globe, that is mild grade. Anterior lamella repositioning is done. Moderate is Kemp and Collen classification. If in the primary gaze the eyelash is touching the globe, that is moderate. Itna to yad kare sakte hain. Lash globe contact in primary gaze. Of course, eyelid is going inside. Eyelash is going inside. But in primary gaze, it is going inside. It is a moderate. okay now the surgery of this depends on the thickness of the tarsal plate <coughs> there is a moderate so anterior lamella repositioning is done and tarsal is thick so tarsal plate resection is also done 
tarsal plate resection just remember the name or you can do a splitting of the lamella you split the anterior posterior lamella here okay lid split is done anterior posterior lamella as you can see in this picture then the posterior lamella is now advanced the posterior lamella is now because you have to bring the eyelid out so posterior lamella is advanced and now sutured posterior lamella is advanced and sutured and now this is left anterior lamella it is covered by mmg mucous membrane graft this will cause the eyelid to come out so moderate case you can do anterior lamella deposition plus tarsal resection if the tarsal is thick or you can do lamellar division you divide as the name suggests divide the two lamella anterior and posterior lamella you divide you bring the post lengthen the posterior lamella and suture it you suture like this and the covering of the anterior lamella which is left by mucous membrane graft theek okay. hai so that is came for in classification 2 and severe is when there is a keratinization theek okay. hai severe hai ki eyelid is so much is gone inside so there is keratinization of the conjunctiva and causing a retraction of the eyelid as well eyelid is retracted so eyelid retraction keratinization you can remember for severe grade what to do for the keratinization of the conjunctiva margin conjunctiva is keratinized so you have to do something for the you have to create a new margin you have to create a new margin you cut the tarsus theek okay, like this see here you are cutting the tarsus you are cutting the tarsus evert the tarsus this tarsus is now everted complete 180 degree evert the tarsus so you are creating a new margin you are creating a new margin 180 degree you turn it and you posterior lamella is now advanced to form the new margin so this is because of the as a name suggests this margin is keratinized you have to create a new margin na? how to create the new margin you cut the tarsus first you cut the tarsus you if you, when you cut the tarsus then you rotate the tarsus so that a new margin is created you rotate the tarsus when it is new margin is created and you bring the posterior lamella advance down so that a complete new margin is created that is known as rotation of the terminal tarsus procedure theek okay? hai and for the lid retraction now this is simple if there is a lid retraction you have to place a posterior lamella grafts posterior lamella grafts are placed like this some grafts are placed when there is a eyelid retraction that you can do for upper lid and tropion remember kemp and collin mild moderate severe so if a patient comes to you with upper lid and tropion straight away you can say so this is a left or right side upper lid and tropion if the eyelash is touching the globe okay without keratinization without lateral retraction it is moderate if on up gaze it is touching the globe it is mild and if there is a eyelid retraction you can see in primary gaze it is severe we will ask you how you are saying is you can say that it's a kemp collin classification you will get full marks